A few days ago, I made a video about this little LED light. This is the Yongnuo YN300 Air. After doing some testing with it, I like the way that it looks, but it's not quite enough light to be a standalone lighting setup or anything, even with this camera that's pretty awesome. So I went on Amazon and I decided to order the other option for this. This is the YN300 Mark III, which comes with barn doors, a remote, as well as a smartphone app, and 300 LEDs instead of 96. So let's go ahead and open this up, take a look at what's inside. You get all kinds of product documentation, with some of it actually being in English, which is nice. You can see all the product specifications in here. So you've got an average output lumens of 2280, color temperatures 3200 to 5500 Kelvin, so on and so forth. Here we have the light panel itself with some silica gel. And you can see we've got the barn doors that are just pre-attached to it, so you just open them up by flipping them out like this, very nice. And in the bottom of the package, you've got the rest of the accessories. So you have that same tripod mount handle that can fit on the light stand, the GoPro style hot shoe mount that will fit onto your camera or onto a tripod. And yes, this is a GoPro size. I did test it with my GoPro and the hot shoe table stand mount. So far, all the same accessories that were with the Air version we looked at before, but you can use it just like that where you slide it in, very convenient. But the rest of these are the accessories that you would only get by going with a model like the YN300 Mark III. There's your remote. You see it has 5,500 Kelvin, 3,200 Kelvin and different channels. So I'm not really sure what that's gonna do. And even inside of the remote, there's silica gel. And the remote does take two AAA batteries. And then you have two gels in the bottom. These are just things that will slide into the panel to give it a slightly different color or to diffuse it a little bit. And so I'll probably end up using this one a lot. The yellow one is gonna give it a very yellow tint and I'm not big on that. Quickly heading back over to the LED panel though, you can see on the bottom is our connection, our GoPro adapter, which actually I hadn't even thought about that. This could technically go on anything that a GoPro can go on. So you could mount this on your head if you really wanted to. On the back you have your power button, which is also your adjustment knob, your status display, battery, channel instead of set. The Wine 300 Air has a set button that allows you to use memory. If I had to guess, the channel button probably has to do with remotes, so you can have one remote to control multiple lights. And then the same sort of settings we found on the Wine 300 Air, you have the 3200, 5500 Kelvin switch, as well as the fine and coarse switch that allows you to go between one and 10 changes whenever you move this dial and your place to put in your battery. Speaking of which, I did pick up a spare battery. This is not the one that they absolutely recommend here on the back. It recommends the NP750 Sony battery. This is the NP550 570. So it's a smaller battery, means it's smaller and lighter. And for what I'm doing, it's probably gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead and pop the battery in. There you go. We'll open our barn doors to make sure everything looks good. And then you flip it over, hit the button. And we're at one. There's a little bit of light. And take it all the way up. We're gonna switch to course just because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. There you go. So that is your 3200 Kelvin all the way up. And there is your 5500 Kelvin all the way up. Looks about the same in terms of brightness as the YN300 Air. But just like the YN300 Air, you hit your battery button, it gives you a P number. In this case, it says P9. That P9 goes down to, I think, P1. I actually haven't run a battery all the way down on any of them yet. And the channel, right now it says H1. H2, 3, so you have a total of eight groups you can put this on. And I think at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a light stand, do a couple of back and forth tests between this and the YN300 Air that we tested before. Okay, so I've got my two lights set up. I've got one on either side of the camera. I went ahead and put in the little diffusion panel on the new light, the YN300 Mark III. And I actually did a very, very quick test and I was really blown away by the results. So here's the light output from the YN300 Air, the one that we looked at earlier. You can see it's very nice. It's kind of diffused, not bad. And here is the light from the YN300 Mark III. I am absolutely blinded. I cannot see what's going on, but it looks like I can control it with the remote, which is very nice. So I can actually put this down at a very reasonably low level to have something kind of similar to what I had from the other light. And there you go, we have them both together. Now I realize this is a bit of a harsh light as compared to my previous lights. It's definitely a whole lot harder to see with both of these on, but just looking at myself in the little viewfinder on the camera, it looks like it's very evenly lit. It doesn't look like it's extremely harsh. I'm kind of really impressed with this. Now I just checked and the YN300 Mark III is at 11. That's 11 out of a possible 99, whereas the YN300 Air is at 99. And just to point it out again, this is the YN300 Air and this is the YN300 Mark III with the white diffuser in front of it at 11. So apparently the YN300 Mark III is capable of being about 10 times brighter, if I had to guess, 10 times than the Wine 300 Air. Not exactly what I was expecting. The Wine 300 Air does a great job, but the Wine 300 Mark III 
even though it is a little bit more expensive, is putting out a massive amount more light. And just for the sake of comparison, here it is with that orange filter in it. This is still at 11, so let's go ahead and turn that all the way up. So you could use something like this if you wanted to make it look like you were on Mars, maybe. And by the way, I should mention, I've got both of these set to 5500 Kelvin. That's just the temperature I normally use. And for the sake of comparison, again, this is what the YN300 Mark III looks like without that white diffuser in it at 11. So what was effectively a comfortable level with the diffuser in, it's a little bit more harsh without it. Yeah, that's definitely a lot easier on the eyes and I think a little bit easier on camera. I've got the diffuser panel back in. I think this definitely could stand to have some sort of a screen over it. Like I've got soft boxes that are sitting behind it that have big white screens over them. Something like that over the barn doors. Even something like that, something super simple like a piece of paper or cheesecloth or something might make it a little bit less harsh, but just looking in the camera again, it's not that bad. And what I'll probably end up doing is actually pushing these lights back a bit. There you go, that's a little bit better. They're not quite so harsh at this point. It's not filling up the room with light. A large part of the light that you see back there is from the windows, which is not gonna be here when I film like 90% of the time. But I think just in terms of comparison, this is not bad. This is not as hot as I expected it to be. You'll probably occasionally see the LED showing up in my glasses. But if you've been watching, whenever I move certain ways with my softboxes, you see big old panels show up in my glasses. So it's not gonna be that big of a difference. And while we're at it, we probably ought to try controlling it with the smartphone app. So on the side of the box, there is a QR code, as you can see, in case you need it, there it is. And when I scanned it, it gives me a URL that I can't read, but it mentions Yongnyo in it and apps. And there's the website in case you're curious. It mentions YN900, YN300 Mark III, and YN600 L Mark II. It also says iPhone and Android. So if I click on the Android version, it's gonna give me an APK file, which by the way, you will have to go into security on your Android device and make sure you have unknown sources enabled. Otherwise it will not be able to install. Now that we've got it downloaded, we'll go ahead and run it. And the app is installed. So we'll go ahead and open that. And there you go. It says Bluetooth disconnected. So apparently I'm gonna have to try to connect to it using Bluetooth. And there you go, right there it is. Yongnu LED, which kind of makes you wonder if you're gonna be able to control multiple lights with it as to whether you'll be able to pair to multiple of these or, or the, I don't know. But I went ahead and restarted the app after I got it connected. It does say Bluetooth connected. And so I guess I ought to be able to just hit the power button. Oh, it just swapped and now it turned off. So there you go. It started off with 5500 and 3200 both at 1% and you can just change it by hitting up and down. It doesn't have a course option on this so I can't do it 10 at a time but luckily this light does not require being 10 at a time. There you go, we're back to where we need to be. So you power it off, power it back on right where you want it to be. You've got four channels here. Oh no, you've got eight channels you can go through. Very nice. And you can very easily just manage how the light looks based upon what it shows inside of the smartphone app. And you know what? That's probably gonna go ahead and wrap this video up for today. Keep in mind, if you do end up picking one of these up, they do not come with a battery. They do not come with an AC adapter. I've picked up batteries for both of these and I've picked up an AC adapter for one. I'll probably go ahead and pick up an AC adapter for the other one just because it's convenient. And I may actually pick up another one of these YN300 Mark III's because I like the barn doors and I like the fact that it can be controlled using this little remote. Super, super convenient. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up below the video. And if you want to, you can subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available. But thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time out of it. It's, it's not the best that I've ever seen or anything. It's actually pretty well on par with my, my Xiaomi 